to assertively lay out the president's case in a way that perhaps hadn't been done before you were brought on. So the president recognized that I need a forceful advocate who can be seen on television and who can, who can seize that platform. At the same time, there's you know, many of you watching, if you're watching on C-SPAN or, or you're here tonight, you want to watch not only the give and take, but the topics to be addressed and see the only representative of the White House on a daily basis, if the president does not speak, say what he wants to say, but also be responsive to members of the press. And whether or not you think we accurately are uh, or are justly represent the views of the American people, that's, that's very much something that's up for debate. But it's a useful, it is a useful exercise. There is also a downside to it. If people think, you know, people are playing to the cameras, I can't control what Tony does. But, um, <laughs> but I will just say this. If you, if you, if you think that, that um, you know, people... <laughs> um, Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, I mean, I, I, I hope that some of my colleagues here will, will vouch for this. But, I, I mean, agree. Some of these exchanges, I, I, haven't, I haven't made the point. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, that, no, but some, some of the exchanges can be just as heated. I mean, you, you described heated going back to the Ford administration. So whether it's a gaggle or whether it's a briefing, a lot of, I think, the, the questioning mm -hmm. is the same. That's my view. I can speak from my own experiences and having tense exchanges off camera and off camera. Um, I've had them both. So I, I think that... Um, I think there's utility, and I also think there is a downside, and I alluded to this a moment ago. I think that po po politics and political coverage has become so polarized in this country, and in part, because everybody, McCurry worried about cable news with the cameras. That, was, that seems like 100 years ago, because it's the Internet and the blogs that have really used this White House press conference to somehow support positions out in America, political views, and they... And they uh, they will clip and digitize portions of these briefings to fit into their particular argument. I think people try to divine motives of the questioners and, and certainly draw conclusions about uh, the answers or, or non-answers uh, based on their, their, their own political views. You know, you raise, I'm glad you raised the blog issue because I think that there'll be kind of a generational divide. Uh, do either of you guys look at blogs much? I write a few, but I don't look at them much. <laughs> And my guess is this side of the room is looks more at blogs. Um, you look at blogs, I right? I blogs. I'm all for blogs. I'm all for the First Amendment. I think yeah. people ought to be empowered. Well, I think what's happened is we, we've got this new democratic age of the media, but you're right. And actually, I'll occasionally punch it up. And it's amazing. You get this wonderful imaginative hateful stuff that comes flying out. And I think one of the, the, the maybe one of the, the most important takeaways is it's the classical line. Not only should you not believe your own press, you probably shouldn't believe your opposition blogs either. What do you think, Richard? Yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah, I totally agree. I, I, uh, David hit on a good point here that a, a lot of the blogs are trying to divine motive and bias. This seems to be the sort of the witch hunt that's out there. A lot of the blogs are, are, are unduly devoted to media criticism, which is itself kind of interesting given all the things you could comment on. Uh, but. Look, uh, as you can tell from my accent, I, uh, I'm not actually from here, and uh, <laughs> from the Bronx, actually. But, uh, <laughs> but in my home country, uh, what used to be my home country, you don't have to uh, try and guess what someone's political bias is in the press, because the press is divided up neatly according to partisan views. And it, uh, in my humble view, I think the press here does a, a fantastic job of adhering to journalistic standards and covering politics in general. And the, um, the interesting thing in, in looking at the political coverage as people try to guess what we do is, is that they want us to play a role that really isn't our role. Our, our role is to ask questions and get information. But it, the press briefing isn't prime minister's question time. It's not a chance for the opposition to take on the government and grill them to a point where they ha throw their hands up and surrender. Now, obviously, there is a contentious spirit there. We're trying to get information, but it's not a political exercise. It's a journalistic exercise, and I think often the blogs are looking for us to be political advocates more than journalistic ones. Another sign of the times my BlackBerry just went off.